Hello, I wanted to go back to the sine wave um, presentation because I did not complete the lecture on how to compute the average or the RMS, the root mean square, which it, it is a very important quantity find the average value of the signal um, to be able to compute other quantities. So using the RMS, the root mean square, is very simple to compute other quantities. So for example, in a pile of sand, you can compute the average weight or you can compute the average distance of the base. So, for example, this is a very cool example, I think, because you can just have a pile of sand and it's going to have a certain height and it's going to have a certain distance. But since the density is the same, you can always put it in a different container, which is going to have the same distance, but here is going to have an average height. Okay, so notice how in this particular case has a pretty unique height because it's a pile but if you were to put this in a container that all has the same height and this is conceptually what we call the average height okay so it could be a little bit more here a little bit less over there but if you were to put it in a container that you can say okay that's the average height and this is good because then you can know okay that is so many meter cubic meters because we have the height and we have the width and we have the depth of the container so that's very useful to know how many buckets so how many trucks do we need to carry that sand for you know for construction purposes or something similarly if you have um say you have to transport the sand and you notice that one truck can travel two hours at 60 miles per hour but the second truck had to do the same amount of distance at uh, more time and because it took less speed then you can say okay well overall the average speed of my fleet of the average speed of my truck or my um, service see my provide I'm providing the service of delivering sand or package the average speed that I can do that at is you know around 45 miles per hour and then I use that quantity to predict what it's going to cost next time that I need to you know deliver sand uh, to a place that is 10 hours away so it's pretty easy to compute the average when it's just these uh, uniform shapes you just do the area of the one that times the area of the second problems or the second solution divided by the total amount of hours that gives you 45 miles per hour but the problem is that sometimes you don't have these nice shapes you don't have always a square signal you can have a sine wave or a triangular sine uh, wave you can see that with a wave generator how do you get the average of those to get the average of those signals we use what is called the RMS so before we get to how to compute the RMS, let's see uh, an example of why that is so useful. So let's say you have a circuit and you want to boil water. So you put a resistance or you put your pot on top, your pot of water on top of um, oven, but you can actuate the oven two ways. With AC, with AC electricity or with DC electricity. So, of course, you can do both if you want to, but the, the goal is first to one or the other. So by using a switch, you can control one versus the other. Say you want to do AC power first, you keep switch one open, you close switch two, and it's going to be delivering AC current to this circuit. Then you open switch two, you let it cool down, then you close switch one, is going to be delivering DC current to this um, circuit. So if you wanted to find 
the power, the total power, you know that the total power is V times I, sorry, yes, V times I, voltage times current, or uh, another formula is I squared times R. And you know that because V equals IR. So for instance, if you do, if you say that, okay, power equals V times I, this is supposed to be equals, equals V times I, but we know that V is also Ohm's law, Ohm's law R times I. So just prove V here. If you take V over here, it's going to be I squared times R, which is this guy. So in the case for AC, we know that our AC wave can be expressed as an amplitude, voltage, or current times sine omega t. If you were to do that squared, because it's the current, then multiply by the resistance that we do need to use for the load, then we get this quantity right here. Okay, and then you can do trigonometric. This is not going to be about trigonometric functions this class, but you can always find in your book or even your calculator could be, or Python can help you with this. This is a trigonometric function that is one half one minus cosine of two omega t and multiplying the, res the resistance. So this is the expression for power. Okay. Um, now, if you were able to instead close switch two and turn switch one and use DC power, you're gonna know that, well, in order to boil the water, I need a certain amount of energy. And that energy can get, I can get it either by AC current or by DC current. We know that DC is simply this, V times I, or power equals I squared times R. So that's okay, we know that. And we know that we can always get our uh, power with AC current, use computing the amplitude and the um, frequency of our of our power, which usually if it's in the US is gonna be 60 Hertz. So that is by default the frequency that we get at our, our house, or this is the sine wave frequency that is provided by our um, utility company. So if you were to compare the power that you can deliver with AC and the power that you can deliver with AC, you're gonna notice that the power that you obtain with DC is around 70% the magnitude of the power delivered with AC. And you can always go back and find how the average of the wave is found. And it's basically a combination of square roots and um, integrals over the area of the sine wave. And that is what gives you this relationship of the amplitude. Remember that the amplitude is, if you were to plot this wave, it's gonna have an amplitude of I m, current, maximum current. This is supposed to be an m, but it's not letting me. So I'm gonna draw it again. This is going to be I m. Okay, good. And that's the maximum amplitude. All right. So the DC, the RMS is basically 0.7 or 70% the maximum current. That is the average value of our um, current. So the point I'm trying to make here is that any time they give you the RMS value, you would have simply to compute this 0 0.707 the maximum amplitude or if you don't know what the maximum amplitude is but you want to know what is your in the other way around they give you the rms when you buy a uh, you know a compressor or a motor they give you the rms voltage and you want to know what's the maximum voltage that is going to uh, be using then you can do the opposite you can do um the RMS divided by 0 0.707, and that will give you the I maximum. Okay, so of course, in a, you can, in a circuit, 
is not very useful because it's not very efficient, but you can always combine power. You can com combine AC and DC power because in both switches you will obtain both powers. And the way to compute that is basically the DC part plus the AC part. Okay. So this is an example right here. Find the RMS value of the sine waves shown in figure A, B, and C. So for part A, the RMS value is simply multiplying 0 0.707 times the maximum amplitude, which is 12 milliamps. 12 milliamps is 12 10 to the negative 3. So when you do that, you get that the RMS value is 8.48 milliamps. Okay. For part B, is exactly the same because the frequency does not matter. What matters is the amplitude. So RMS is going to be 12 times 12 milliamps times 0 0.707. And in this case, they tell you for case C that you need to do 169.7 times 0 0.707, which is equal to 120 volts. So this is what you get from your outlet at your place, 120 AC. Okay, so in other words, this wave traveling at 60 hertz is what your equipment or your appliances will see at home because it goes positive 169.7, ne negative 169.7. So that positive, negative, positive, negative, overall in a period of time, the appliance, what it sees is a mean value of 120 volts AC. So that's how you compute, that's how you compute the RMS voltage. And that is very useful <clears throat> because that lets you find the average power and the average um, current and the average voltage. Let's look at another example. Determine the peak value of the applied voltage, EM, capital EM, or E maximum, and the current, capital EM. Sorry, so this is voltage, capital EM, and the current is capital IM. Current is I, and voltage in this case is going to be capital E. So determine the peak value. We know that in this case is DC, so DC is the same value throughout the, the, the circuit. So that's a peak value, it's 120. But in AC is not. In AC is going to go up and down, current and voltage. At first, unless they find a capacitor or they find an inductor, they're gonna have the same phase, the current and the voltage. So if you want to do the DC part first, you know that P equals V times I. If you now find the current, is just the power divided by the voltage. That gives you 30 milliamps. In case you want to do the AC, this is going to be the RMS value. So it's going to be the RMS or 0.7. Um, sorry, remember that in this case, we have the DC power and we want to find the AC. And the AC is divided by 0 0.707. So if we were to do calculator, 1 divided by 0 0.707 equals 1.4144. And this is what we have here. So if you want to find the maximum which is they're asking the EM and the IM, the maximum, then is going to be divided by 0 0.707, which is approximately the same as square root or, or 1.414. Okay, so these things are similar. You can see depending on the book or depending on the pamphlet or the manufacturer, they will show you our maximum is 1.41 or square root or divided by 0.707. So that's just ways of calculating the maximum values. So we know that the DC current is 30 milliamps. This is very useful because if the manufacturer is creating a tool 
and first they're using DC power, then they validate the tool works the way they want it, it's, it's sturdy enough, and they want to create the AC uh, solution for it, they know that to have the same power, then they will be operating with an AC current, an AC, basically a sine wave, and those maximum values are found using the DC current divided by 0 0.707, or in other words, AC current times 1.414, depending if you want to divide or multiply. Either you multiply times 1.414 or you divide by 0 0.707. But the point is that the maximum current is 42.42 milliamps and the maximum voltage, which also is going to be 120 volts times 1.414, is going to be 169.7. So the point here is from AC to DC, you multiply 0 0.707 times your AC voltage or AC current. Okay, but from DC to AC, you multiply your current or your voltage times your current or your voltage times 1.414. So this is how you get from your RMS to your absolute or maximum values. So this happens, and we'll see more about this pretty soon, uh, coming lecture. This happens in your converters and your inverters and your rectifiers when you buy a computer, when you buy a radio, when you buy an iPhone. If you look at your laptop, there's going to be something like this, a converter, where it's connected to your laptop to provide the DC power, because laptops work on DC power, but it takes AC power from the wall. So what happens, and again, we'll see more about this shortly, coming lecture, We have you get your sine wave at 60 hertz with uh, 169 point, 170 volts, mostly. <clears throat> And then what happens is depending on what the voltage is needed for your computer to operate, they will first get the DC voltage. So this part is very important. They use circuits to convert your AC to DC and then they rectify it so that it's only taking the maximum value. And then they transform it either up or down depending on the voltage that they need. So they need they take the 170 maximum power from the wall from the socket at your house and then they take it back to uh, from a transformer and they say the maximum power they need is 12 volts for your computer so we'll talk about this a diode and they have a, a circuit in parallel with resistors and capacitors and this part to the left let me draw here this part to the left is going to be ac this part to the right is DC. Okay, so it took 170 and then was able to, with, with a transformer, was able to, well, actually, with a transformer, was able to step it down to 14. So that could be the first step, depending on how, the, depending on the technology that they use. They take the 170, they transform it, transform it to 14 volts. And then what they end up doing is they rectify it with a, diode and series of capacitors and resistors they get rid of the negative part of the wave and they basically have a filter to get a maximum value with a zener diode or with a bridge of diodes we'll talk about that later to get the maximum dc voltage so at the end you get 12 dc 12 volts dc going to your computer or to microphone or to your speaker or whatever the application is but the point is, is that this thing right here using a circuit similar to this takes ac and converts it to dc and that's we saw all the math behind it how they take the rms value and now using a bunch of elements active and passive passive are capacitors and resistors active are op amps and diodes etc they can get your dc signal inverters are similar but 
do the opposite thing. Inverters take DC voltage and give you an AC solution, an AC voltage. So this could be also for your industrial machines where you have a controller that needs to vary the velocity of a motor. We'll see, a, we'll talk about that when we talk about motors and drivers. But in order to vary the velocity of a motor, you can either vary the voltage or you can sustain the voltage the same and vary the frequency. The problem with varying the voltage in a motor is that you get a, your torque reduced significantly versus with varying the frequency, you can still high, have very high torque, but just have lower velocities. So inverters do the opposite. Take DC power and convert it, convert it to AC um, waves. We'll talk about, talk about these uh, elements more in depth uh, in future lectures.